a patient they diagnosed, he was three and a half years old. They said, okay, he's having hyperspirin. No, let's think of allo immunization. This is very important because allo immunization will result in a lower hemoglobin uh, achieved with the blood transfusion uh, and uh, so uh, a higher frequency of transfusion, higher uh, iron overload, more cost of iron chelation therapy and uh, better prognosis uh, and worse prognosis for the patient. So I, I, I get a high cost and I get a prognosis which is not good for the patient. Uh, allo immunization, so I'm going to speak about allo immunization in hemoglobinopathies. Uh, this, is, uh, this means I'm going to speak about red cell allo immunization, which refers to the development of antibodies to the non-ABO red blood cell antigens uh, following transfusion. Speaking of uh, 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 older age, we can speak of pregnancy or we can speak of transplantation. As you see, we have more than 300 inherited blood group antigens described on the surface of the human red cells. Those in the orange or in the red are those associated with significant antibodies. Uh, they include the ABO, the MNS, which is more common in the Asians, the RH system, uh, the CAL system, uh, the Duffy, as well as others. Uh, concerning alloimmunization in thalassemia, the, the rates, the described rates are variable, varying from uh, 4 to 37 percent compared that in the general population or uh, those who are transfused in the hospital, it doesn't exceed 1 to 4 percent. Generally, allo immunization rates in thalassemia are lower when you get more homogeneous populations. It's lower in Italians, it's lower in Greece, it's lower in Iran because the populations are more homogeneous. When you get a discrepancy between in the uh, small, in, in the, the red cell antigens, uh, between the donor and the recipient, you are uh, at risk of getting alloimmunization. Uh, what's our state in Egypt? Uh, I refer to three papers, two of them done in our uh, department. Uh, one of them uh, worked on 235 patients with thalassemia, and uh, the, the prevalence of red cell and allo antibodies was 19.5%, uh, mainly against the, the CAL system and the RH system. Uh, and uh, we have made a program from this group. There was a patient on a program which is called Limited Donor Program. Uh, uh, some donors are uh, limited to specific thalassemia patients. And in this group, it was found that the incidence or the prevalence of allo antibodies was 8.3%. So Limited Donor uh, Program is associated with less development of allo antibodies. This was published in 2012, but I think this this work was done around 2010 or something like that. Because another paper published later on in 2014, uh, it's in the same center, they found the red cell allo antibodies were 10.5%. Uh, and uh, the, the same, the anti-CAL and the anti-E of the RH were the most common. Auto antibodies in this study were found in only one out of 200 patients. So auto antibodies are less frequent. This study uh, was uh, done in the National uh, Research Center. Uh, five one patients with beta thalassemia, and still they described 11.3% of allo antibodies, the same anti-CAL, anti-E, and anti-C of the RH uh, system. But in this study, they, they described autoantibodies in 28.8%. This is a very high rate. It's not, it's not described so in beta thalassemia patients. So, uh, we, are, we are having a minimum of 10% alloimmunization among our population of thalassemia patients. Uh, and uh, as in the general, as is generally described, they are also against the CE and the CAL antigens because uh, we regularly do cross-matching with the D antigen of the RH system as well as the ABO. Concerning sickle cell disease, sickle cell disease is much more studied uh, because it's in the United States, because uh, sickle cell disease, the, the alloimmunization is very high. Uh, the reports in the UK, USA, and Kuwait vary between 5 and 76%. Um, I should say there are host and uh, donor factors. I'm going to speak about them very rapidly. What are the risk factors? Number one, donor factors ethnic or racial disparity of the donor-recipient population. If, there is, if the donor is Caucasian and the recipient is African, okay, they may have a different uh, antibodies on red cells and they are at risk of development of alloimmunization. Uh, this is very important. The more they, they are homogenous, the less the alloimmunization. 
Uh, there are other factors concerning also the recipient. Salicylics and sickle cell are more likely to develop. There are genetic factors. Inflammation is an important factor, and age is an important factor for development of allo antibodies. Uh, studies reveal that duration of transfusion and older age are associated with increased risk of allo immunization, as we would expect. Splenectomy also is very important because when the spleen is removed, you get alteration in the immune responses. And after splenectomy, there we get conformational changes in the red cell membranes. They will result these changes in the red cell membrane. They make them more antigenic, and we get uh, enhanced immune modulation, resulting in allosensitization. Other thing, if the uh, red cells are there, are uh, red, it's, it's let's say it contains leukocytes because allogenic white disease with the red cell products, they cause allergic reactions, febrile as well as alloimmunization. And immunological status of the recipient is very important. Uh, we are going to speak about inflammation. One of the markers of inflammation is the Tregs, which are the prime regulators of the immune response. They were found that hosts, recipients who develop alloimmunization are those who have a lower Treg values, reduced activity. This, all of this uh, have made the thinking, can we search for molecular markers for the host who is at risk? Uh, I should speak. Inflammation is important. Immune dysregulation is important. Uh, in, uh, also, HLA typing. Some HLA alleles may predispose to allo antibody formation. And they found that in sickle cell disease, HLA-B and HLA-DRB1 are associated with uh, allo immunization. Stressing back to inflammation. Transfusion is an inflammatory state. It's well proved. And this is associated with allo immunization. Chronic transfusion is a, an inflammatory state. So the chronic, that's number one. On the other hand, a patient with sickle cell disease, sickle cell disease per se, is an inflammatory state uh, and is uh, associated with increased cytokines, and these cytokines result in a stimulation of antigen presenting cell activities. That's why sicklers are more liable to develop allo antibodies. The most important that if you get a polytransfused patient who develops allo antibody, is at risk to develop other allo antibodies or at risk to develop also auto antibodies. So these patients, they should be screened every three months uh, for allo antibodies, new allo antibodies. Because once you develop multiple antibodies, this will make it uh, difficult to find a compatible blood unit. This gets very serious. How to prevent or uh, do intervention for alloimmunization in hemoglobinopathies? The, the best and the ideal is initially, before the patient is transfused, to make an extended red cell phenotyping. You have his ID, the ID of this patient concerning all the blood groups, if possible. If not, do the RH and do the CAL. This is, we call it limited phenotyping. Uh, what's the aim of this? The aim is when the patient later on is going to receive transfusion, you may find difficulty to know his original uh, red cell phenotyping. And if he develops allo antibodies, you will find difficult to know uh, his antibodies. What, what blood unit I'm going to prepare later on? I should prepare, if the patient gets allo antibodies, I should prepare later on blood units which are compatible with his Phenotyping, red cell phenotyping, how to know it if he is already transfused. I should have his primary red cell phenotyping from the start. This is very ideal. Okay? Uh, uh, although prospective phenotype matching for the CE and the CAL in sickle cell disease and thalassemia, clearly they decrease the alloimmunization rate and cause reduction in the hemolytic transfusion reaction. Not all center C is cost effective. Actually, it's really cost effective. As I said, it will lead to decreasing the cost of transfusion and the cost of the arm chelation. This is what we get, the, red, the limited red cell phenotyping. I hope it is, uh, it's apparent. This is the ABO blood group and the D, and then you get the C, the E, and the CAL. This is what we do in our patients. But if you have a patient, when you start this while he is already transfused, one of them you will find mixed. What's meant by mixed? The red, some of the red cells are expressing this antigen, and others are not expressing the same antigen because some of them are transfused, and some of them are the patient own uh, cells. So uh, in this case, you are going to give this patient antigen negative if he is having allo antibodies. Okay, this is the most uh, important of what I should say. The most important that 
Uh, there are in the USA, in the UK, and the Kuwait, the reports of alloimmunization in sicklers. If you do uh, matching for the ABO and D, the alloimmunization varies between, okay, the alloimmunization varies between 18 and 76 percent. But if you do matching for the C, the E, and the Cal antigen, uh, the uh, alloimmunization drops to 5 to 11 percent. But if you always do give blood completely phenotype blood unit, the alloimmunization drops to 0 to 7 percent. So at least, and it is available, it increases the cost of the, of the, of the blood unit, uh, 70 pounds. 70 pounds means less than $10. So it's, it's, it's worth. Leukocyte reduction, it has been said, leukocyte reduction, hard, ya ilhe. Five dollars. I'm not good in calculation and in money, money wise. Okay. Uh, okay. Leuco reduction, it has been said that it may decrease alloimmunization, but the, the results are very uh, variable. Okay, so the best is to do enhanced donor recruitment, directed donor programs. As I said in, in our unit, it dropped alloimmunization from, uh, from about 18% to 8% when you have selected donors limited to selected recipients. This is very, this is very good program. Uh, top, he developed alloantibodies. You may go to immunomodulation, you use intravenous uh, immunoglobulins, you use steroids, up you, should, you may go up to rituximab to prepare for him one blood unit. The most important is the patient's development of autoantibodies. These autoantibodies, they can target antigens on red cells. These, they can target antigens on red cells as well as antigens outside the red cells. But the, rate, the reported rate of production of autoantibodies and sickle cell disease is less than the alloantibodies. It's reported to be around 8%. Less than, it's less than half. How to, how to find it? Uh, to find it by the direct antiglobulin test against the IgG with or without complement 3. Okay, the, this is very important. Is auto, all autoantibodies are going to be symptomatic. Some of them may not cause hemolysis. Some of them may, may cause severe hemolysis. But in all cases, it's important. Why it's important? It's important because we should know that there is an association between an alloimmunization and autoantibody production. So we should do all our efforts to decrease alloimmunization. If I do so, I am going to decrease autoimmune production. Our aim is uh, to prevent such a serious condition like delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction, which occurs six to 10 days after transfusion. It may mimic vaso-occlusive crisis in sickle cell disease, or the patient comes, he's, he's transfused with a hemoglobin of eight, he comes after six days with a hemoglobin of five, with the red urine, he is having hemoglobinuria, he is having back pain, he is having back condition. Uh, Kuhn's test, uh, direct and indirect, may be positive. He may have allo or may have auto antibodies. This is what we call delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction, mainly related to the presence of allo antibodies. It's an anamnestic immunological response uh, due to prior exposure to the target red cell antigen. Uh, hyperhemolysis, not the received fact red cell units, but also the patient's red cells. So you get lower hemoglobin than the uh, initially uh, transfused for. And there is re decreased uh, reticulocytic production because of suppressed erythropoiesis. And management with high dose steroids, IV, IG, uh, and a prognosis is, uh, could be um, a very serious when it is a severe uh, condition. So what's the best prevention of alloimmunization? Is to do conservative red cell transfusion, stick to guidelines when it comes to a red cell transfusion. So conclusion, alloimmunization in hemoglobinopathies, in Egyptians, the minimum reported value is 10%, means 10% uh, means one in every 10 patients uh, is liable to have alloantibodies. Uh, the management of, al uh, of alloantibodies once they occur is difficult, but prevention is most important. And if we calculate the cost effectiveness, it will be very much cost effective. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Lanza, for your very, very